Let's now solve this interesting combinatorics problem from the AMC 10 and 12, number 24. How many strings of length 5 can be formed from the digits 0 through 4? And how many are there such that for each j from 1 to 4, at least j of the digits are less than j? So what does this mean? One of the digits, at least one of the digits, is less than 1. At least two of the digits, less than two. Three of the, of the digits, at least, less than three. Or at least four of the digits are less than four. And at least, well, and at least five of the digits are less than five. Well, notice in the problem anyway says that the, the number, the strings of length five, so one, two, three, four, five, are formed from zero through four digits. So this condition is kind of redundant because it just says that five digits less than five. Well, I mean, we already know that all the digits are less than five because they're each from zero through four. So what, how can we approach this problem? I mean, it seems like there's going to be a bunch of cases to try, a bunch of stuff to do, but we're going to use complementary counting. Why should we use complementary counting? Well, the reason is, is because Instead of counting however many ways to do whatever this is, we can instead find the number of ways where there's not one digit less than one, or there's not two digits less than two, or there's not three digits less than three, and so on. And to do that, well, first of all, what is the total number of ways? Well, total number of possible strings, there's five choices for each digit, right? Zero through four. And there's five digits, so five to the five equal to three, one, two, five. Okay, now let's move on to the actual part of the problem. Let's make this all small so we can get to case work. And now we just take the cases for complementary counting. So the first case for the, again, we're looking at the cases where it does not work. The first case is that there's no digits less than one. No digits less than one. If there's no digits less than one, that means all of the digits are one or more. No digits less than one. The opposite of that is all the digits are numbers from one to four. So one, two, three, four for each of the five digits. Therefore, there's four to the five equal to 1,024 ways where this happens, because four choices for each digit, four to the five, one, oh, two, four. Case two. Okay, so the second case is that there's no digits less than or equal to two. So now we, there's, act, there's probably a way to solve this problem by taking each of these cases and then doing PIE to the track intersection. But we're gonna do something even smarter. So the thing is, we've already counted all the cases where there's no digit less than one, right? So for these cases, to find the cases where there's no digit less than two, we'll also take the cases where there is a digit less than one. So we're only finding unique cases that don't satisfy the second condition and not cases that already don't satisfy the first condition because we'd be over counting those cases anyway. So then for our number, it must contain a zero. And if the number must contain a zero, and it has to have not no necessarily zero or one digit that's less than two. Zero or one digits less than two. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we already have a zero, so we can either have, we essentially have a few cases from here. We can have, let's say we have just, we have zero, digits less than two. Is that even possible, first of all? Zero digits less than two. No, because we already have a digit less than two. So again, we're looking at the cases where there's not two digits less than or less than two. There's just zero or one digits. But we already have one digit less than two. So therefore, we must have one digit less than two. And well, what does that mean? That means that all three of these other numbers must be two or more. So two, three, four, two, three, four, 
two, three, four, two, three, four. So there's five choices for where the zero can go, and there's three to the four choices for each of the remaining digits. Three times three times three times three equals 405. Okay, case three. Now case three, again, we're gonna do something similar. Case three is going to be the possibilities that don't satisfy this condition, but do, do satisfy the first two conditions because we're not trying to overlap anything with the previous conditions. So this case will be zero, one, or two digits less than three. And well, to, have, to satisfy this for the first two conditions, we must have one zero, first of all, that's required by the first condition. And for the second condition to be true, we kind of have a few cases. We can either have a second zero, or we can have zero one, zero one, right? Because there has to be at least one zero, and then there has to be two digits less than two, or two digits zero or one. So we can either have two zeros, or one zero, and one one. Okay, so, and the rest of the, the digits, we must not satisfy this, we, we must have, we must not satisfy the condition that three digits are less than three, which means that there must be zero, one, or two digits less than three. And if that's the case, then, well, we're guaranteed to have, as you can see, we're guaranteed to have two digits less than three anyways. So that means the remaining digits must be three or more. So three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. And then again, three, four, three, four, three, four. So for this case, we have five choose two slots for the zeros. And then we have five choose two slots for the zeros and two cube slots for the remaining three digits, which is 80. And for this over here, we have five choices for the zero, four for the one, so 20 choices. And then times, again, two cubed here. And in this case, the order of zero and one matters. In this case, the order of zero and one does not matter. I mean, because they're the same digits, so zero and zero. Okay, so 80 and 20 times two cubed, 160. Okay. Okay, so that's case three. And let's make these two cases small because we're done with them anyways. Oops. So now the next case will be the conditions that satisfy, the conditions that satisfy the first condition, the second condition, and the third condition of three digits less than three. So case four, satisfies the first three conditions, but does not satisfy the third, the fourth condition. So not four digits less than four. So again, we've got five digit slots here, five digit slots over here, as you can see, and we must find cases that do have one digit less than one. So there has to be a zero. They do have two digits less than two, two digits less than two, so there has to be at least one other zero or one. So at least one more zero or one. And three digits less than three. So three digits that are zero, one, or two. And we can kind of just take all these possibilities. The first one is three zeros. So there's three numbers less than two, one number less, at least one number less than one, and at least two numbers less than two. So this satisfies all three cases. We can also have something like, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take all of these possibilities because one digit has to be zero, one has to be zero or one, and one has to be zero, one, or two. So zero, 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 the first case. The second case was, or is, zero, zero, one. Next, we can have zero, zero, two. Next, we can have zero, one, two, or next we can have zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And the next case is going to be zero, one, two. And then, and that's it. Yeah. 
So the key thing here is that this case is already counted here. We're going to multiply for orderings, the permutations at the end. So we can just cross out this case here. It's already over count. It's already counted for. Okay, so in this first case, we essentially have, well, we have to have not four digits less than four, which means that, well, we already have guaranteed three digits less than four. So then the other two digits must be four or more. And the only thing, because our choices are limited from zero to four, they have to be both four. So four, four. So th this will just be five choose two ways equals 10, right? Because five choose two ways to order it. In this case, well, these again must be four and four. By the same logic, we're not trying to have four digits less than four. So this will have, well, this one will not just be five choose two. This will be five factorial, or it will be five choose two. We choose two spots for the four, and then, then we multiply after choosing two slots for the four by three, because from zero, zero, one, there's three choices for the one. So we choose two slots for the four, it can be whatever, and then from the remaining three slots, one choice for the one. So this is 30. This case is very similar. We again choose two for the four, and then three choices for which one is the two, 30. This case is zero, just ignore it. This one, this one is again, five choose two slots for the fours. These have to both be four. And then three slots for which one is zero for the remaining digits. And for the final case, it's five choose two for which one, which two are four and three factorial ways to arrange the remaining three digits, zero, one, two. This is 60, this is 30. We can sum all these up. 10 plus 30 plus 30 is 70 plus 30 plus 60. So 70 plus 90, 160. So the total for this case, 160. And the total for this case was 240. And the total for this case was 405. And the total for this case was 1024. So in total, the number of ways that don't work are 1024, 405, 240, and 160 added up. And if we do that, we get well, the sum of these two quantities is 400. So the sum of these three, or sorry, the sum of 240 and 160 is 400. And 400 plus 405 is 805. And 805 plus 1024 is 1829. So then what we do is we take five to the five, 3125 minus the ways that don't work, 3125 minus 1829. And if we do the subtraction, we get 1300 minus 4, 1296, which gives E as our answer. So the key thing here is the reason we did complementary counting was because we're looking for the possibilities where these cases work. And rather than looking for some kind of extract condition we don't really know how to deal with, we just look for the number of ways where we don't have each of these conditions. And then we did a clever trick that avo avoided us pi by seeing that just the cases that don't work from the previous cases. So we're not overcounting. So for example, for to have not four digits less than four, and these three cases are satisfied because we've already subtracted four of the cases where they aren't. And then we just do a little bit of casework. We add them up and subtract to get our answer. Now let me show you a cool meta solving solution. So, so the cool thing here is that out of all permutations, we must have all of our conditions satisfied, like I mentioned earlier, one digit less than one, two less than two, so on. So here's an example of something that could work, maybe. Zero, one, one, two, three. That's a valid arrangement, right? We've got a digit less than one, two less than two, three less than three, four less than four, and of course, five less than five. This is something that does work. So the cool thing here is that well, because we have to have, because we have, uh, we can, a zero, we have different digits, we can essentially create five arrangements in this order. So we can, what we can do is we can rewrite this as 30112 or three, or 23011 or 12301 or 11230. Basically what we're doing is we first start with this number, then we start, then we kind of, this is our start and we cycle back 
So 30112, that gives us that number. Then we do 23011, giving us this number. And then 12301, giving us this number. And 11230, giving us this number. So as you can see here, the number of possible ways when you kind of shift the digits in this is a multiple of 5. But there's some cases where we can't shift it like this. For example, the only such case is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this case actually does not work or does not have five ar arrangements if you kind of sh cyclically shift some digits because we only have one arrangement here and shifting it is just going to give the same permutation. But the key thing to note here is even if we had just one digit difference, so like a one here or something, then we could still have five different cyclic ver versions of shifting if we do that. So overall, our answer will be 1 mod 5 because we've got a one case here and the rest is a multiple of 5. And we can see that the only answer choice that's 1 mod 5 is E. So we solved it from there. Another way of seeing this without looking at cyclic shifts is to notice that it's just to try a few cases and see that, for example, this has 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial. And all of these versions will always have 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, if it's like 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, or something like that. But the key point here is that no matter what, will always be a multiple of 5 unless there's a 5 factorial term in the denominator, which only occurs when there's 5 of the same digit, which happens only in this case. And remember, the reason we can't have something like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is because of the fact that we're given here, there has to be one digit less than one. So there has to be one zero. So this is the only case with all digits same. And you get, again, the answer must be one mod five, and E is the only option choice that satisfies this. Thanks for watching.